Hi everyone, I'm going to do the second reading today and I have picked up Making Cocoa for Kingsley Amos by Wendy Cope. I had planned on <laughs> taking you out to read this and it being glorious sunshine but this is England after all and of course nothing is predictable. So instead I am currently hiding <laughs> under a tree in the rain. When I first came across Wendy Cope, I think it was probably in my third year of my degree, um, I was doing a poetry workshop class and I just sat down the previous evening with my tutor. He had told me that I needed to go out and read some more female writers because my poetry was all about female experience. The only woman I'd really read work by at that point was Caroline Duffy and she's a very lyrical, very structured poet. His hope was that I would go out and find something a bit more off the wall and so I went into the library and picked up as many volumes of poetry by women as I could find and one of them was Wendy Cope. So the poem I'm reading for you today is called A Policeman's Lot. The thing I love about Cope's writing is the sense of humour. I think it contrasts quite strongly with Heaney in that Heaney deals with a lot of quite heavy emotions. Cope's poem is a nice counterpoint to that. In A Policeman's Lot, I think my favourite part of the poem is the persona. It's, it's an incredible characterisation. It's really funny. Straight away I get images of, you know, the traditional Bobby on the beach with these big black shoes and dark blue uniform, the big policeman's hat and in a kind of a gruff voice telling us about his daily life. So shall we begin? Okay. A Policeman's Lot. The progress of any writer is marked by those moments when he manages to outwit his own inner police system. Ted Hughes. Oh, once I was a policeman, young and merry, young and merry, controlling crowds and fighting petty crime, petty crime. But now I work on that as literary, literary, and I am growing old before my time, before my time. No, the imagination of a writer, of a writer, is not the sort of beat a chap would choose, chap would choose, and they've assigned me a prolific blighter, prolific writer. I'm patrolling the unconscious of Ted Hughes. It's not the sort of beat a chap would choose, chap would choose, patrolling the unconscious of Ted Hughes. All our leave is cancelled in the lambing season, lambing season, when bitter winter froze the drinking trough, drinking trough. For our commander stated, with good reason, with good reason, that that's the kind of thing that starts him off, starts him off. But anything with four legs causes trouble, causes trouble. It's worse than organising several zoos, several zoos. Not to mention mythic creatures in the rubble, in the rubble, patrolling the unconscious of Ted Hughes. It's worse than organising several zoos, several zoos, patrolling the unconscious of Ted Hughes. Although it's disagreeable and stressful, well and stressful, attempting to avert poetic thought, poetic thought. I could boast of times when I've been successful, been successful and conspiring compound epithets were caught, threats were caught. But the poetry statistics in this sector, in this sector, are enough to make a copper turn to booze, turn to booze. 
and I do not think I'll make it to inspector to inspector, patrolling the unconscious of Ted Hughes. It's enough to make a copper turn to booze, turn to booze, patrolling the unconscious of Ted Hughes. After W.S. Gilbert. So yes, as you can see, that that poem's a, it's almost a kind of, like I say, it's Gilbert and Sullivan style. It's quite comic and farcical. The copper up on stage or in front of you telling the story, and then you've got the chorus in the background echoing the last two words of each line. <laughs> I just really enjoy it. And I think anyone who's creative as a writer or an artist or dramatist can understand the idea that, you know, in your head there's this voice going like, what on earth? Nope, nope, nope. Or writer's block or things like that. So it's it's just it's quite hilarious to, to actually imagine it as a big plodding policeman. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoy it as always and I'll follow up with some criticism. Speak to you soon.